Welcome to Live the Fuel, where we fuel your health, business, and lifestyle. And now your host, Scott Mulvaney. All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another 2022 Live the Fuel show. So today, well, for me, it's this evening. For him, it's earlier in the day. He's on the West Coast. I'm catching up with a very well-connected health and fitness. I'm going to go ahead and say influencer. I know that term gets thrown around a lot nowadays, but from my background research on him, I'm going with it. So let me give you a quick skinny on this guy. Definitely understands health, definitely understands wellness, definitely understands fitness. Uh, he might know a little bit about, I'm going to go ahead and say it, badass fitness equipment because I've been all over his site. And there's a few pieces of equipment that I want to talk about because I'm a huge CrossFit functional fitness guy. Uh, but since co-founding Escape Fitness, that's right, Escape Fitness, we'll do some screen sharing on today's show too. Uh, taking it to, here you go, $33 million global business. Just throwing that out there. He might have a few clues about online business or global business and the fitness industry. I mean, we're talking about connections with UFC and Equinox, Orange Theory. These are all big brands that are still rocking, especially even though the pandemic has happened and everything else. So there's a lot more about him and I want to get right into it. So without further ado, Matthew Janusek, sir, welcome to Live the Fuel. Thank you so much for inviting me on. Yeah. So one, your background is awesome. And by the way, is that a green screen or is that real? Because I'm going green. Yeah, screen, I wish so. I wish it was real. Um, <laughs> no, I am. I, I am in the I'm fortunate to be in the sun, and we've got palm trees and, nice. and that kind of stuff. But it, it is a it is a green screen background. Well, I just got back from a, a business trip to New York, literally one hour ago, exactly. So uh, I came home to snow and ice uh, here at my new home uh, that we just got in last May. So. I have some work to do tomorrow morning. So <laughs> that being said, uh, we have opposite climates. We have three hours apart. That's why I love podcasting because time zones uh, basically melt away. I've had people on here from the UK, Australia. It's super fun. And, and so thank you for making the time. But let's jump in here. Uh, I took a slight break on the podcasting circuit in 2021 to get my book out. So you want to be a hotshot. And I made a new commitment to myself, as I kind of told you before we hit record today, that I really want to dial it even tighter into a lot of mindset work, a lot of focus on health, fitness, and yes, the business component. But it's funny because a lot of people want to come on from the business world, and I respect it because I'm a business professional, sales and marketing, and I have my own company, and people just drive right into the business. And I was like, guys, there's more to life than just business, right? There's the health and fitness that goes along the way. And I think who better than you, because you're literally connecting with fitness and exercise influencing businesses, gyms, et cetera. So off of that theme, where do you want to get started today? Because you're the guest co-host. So we're, we're sharing the responsibility today. I don't like to interview people. I want you to share okay. the mic. Let's, let's have a good time. So. Well, I think I, like, I love your philosophy because it's one that I talk about a lot in in my business and in, in my podcast and with people I know. And, and I, as you said, we had a bit of a chat about this off camera and, and some of your decisions in terms of where you were going with your podcast. And, and for me, I, I, I have a, you know, speak to people and, and they say, well, how do you get, how do you get time to, to work out and exercise when you've got your own business? I, I've also, I'm married. I've been happily married for 11 years now. I've got two, I've got nine and a, I've been married 12 years, actually. Um, I've got a nine and a 10 year old. <laughs> That's okay. I've only been um, married for two and I think it's now three. So I'm already yeah. forgetting. <laughs> um, yeah, nine and a 10 year old. And, um, and so it's like, you know, where do you, you know, that's, that's the biggest issue. Well, I, I don't have the time. And, um, and, and to be honest, I, you know, I answer that and say, well, you know, it's, it, it's really down to, priorities how, how important is health and fitness to you and I and I think the big shift that people maybe well the big big mental shift that you need to make is uh, one you have to realize that it comes before all of those things it comes before money it comes before your relationship with your wife it comes before your relationship with your children it it, it, it comes right if you had to set a list a hierarchy of things that are important that has to come up the top and um and you can say, well, that's a bit selfish. You know, why would you do that before your wife and your children, all those things? And, it, and it's a case of, well, look, if you don't do that, then stuff starts to quickly fall to pieces. You know, there's a big mind com mindset and mental health component about working out um, that, you know, physically, as particularly as you get older, I'm, I'm sort of 51 now, um, there's an energy level which affects your relationships with 
the people that you work with. Um, it affects the success that you have in, in your business because you need energy. You need to, you know, being an entrepreneur is not easy. It, it, and, oh, it's and not? Nobody, <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it takes a lot of mental energy. You know, every, you know, every day there's some problems that come to you. So you need to have the, the, the physical energy to deal with those. And at the end of the day, you still need to have the same amount of energy. Like I, I, my first call was at 6 a.m. this morning. It's 3 o'clock this afternoon. I got a meeting tonight in, you know, in Los Angeles at sort of 6, and I'll probably get back at about 11. So mm. to, to be on fire and energetic and thinking, and uh, you, you have to have some energy. So, so you know, your business is, is, is affected by it. Your relationship with your children, because if you come back at the weekend and you've had a really tough week, like I have, very, very long, tough week, then your children, you know, to be a good father, they're going to expect you to show up and want to play basketball and 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 just be there and present and all that. And I'm not saying that I get that right all the time, but but having, you know, putting that first allows you to be successful in all the other areas of your life. And that just isn't just like, like fitness, it's, you know, it's it's the, it's what you eat. It's how you sleep. It's it's your different elements of you know different types of strength training, cardiovascular mobility, and all those kind of things that go with it. But mm -hmm. you you really you know anyone that's that's really successful consistently um, really has that part quite well dialed in. I totally agree with that. It's funny when you go to, well, I still go to them here and there, but up until pre pandemic. There was a lot more masterminding in person and, you know, entrepreneurial events and stuff like that. And they're slowly cranking back up again. I love to see that because I truly believe, yes, it's great to virtually connect with you, but I reach a whole different level of energy when I'm connecting with somebody physically and in person, just like working out. Like I used to be a CFO one trainer in the CrossFit space. My wife is a member of my friend's CrossFit gym only five minutes away. I will drop in for a weekend partner workout on Saturdays with her. And we do, you know, couples workouts. But other than that, I built my own gym. My new house here has a 30 by 35 foot. The, the, the prior owner had just built it four years ago, a uh, metal pole barn. So I'm like, oh, new man zone. So garage bay one is all the gym. <laughs> nice. Garage bay two, you know, mountain biking shop, you know, skis for this time of year, et cetera. But you got to have your fitness space. So long story short, it's just... I still miss the, when I used to teach classes. I taught spinning for six years in, in the traditional gym world, the cycling world. I've been a cyclist my whole life. So I, I obviously I know California very, very well. I used to live in Colorado. I, I'm a big cyclist. So, but these are those elements where, especially this time of year in the winter, some of those things fall away and, and back mm -hmm. to your point, energy, right. But also stress relief back to the psychology and the mindset. I've been guilty of it. I mean, it's only January, you know, middle of January right now, as we're recording this, but I felt some of my timing get thrown off. And I, I think we all have to get caught on that sooner or later. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not hitting the strength, strength training regimen that I normally am. Great. The rowing is fine on the rowing machine, yada, yada, yada. But I was like, I got to get back hitting those weights heavy. It's the winter season. I can't be riding my bike as often. Although I did pull the old road bike down and set it up in the, in the basement gym that I set up for the wife because she doesn't want to work out in the barn. She's like, that's too cold out there. You, you, but we have a finished basement, go put it in there. <laughs> so, um, so I, I plan on launching, uh, some online cycling with a couple of buddies of mine. And so why? Because I feel the stress kind of cranking back up a little bit. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm all, I, I understand this. I've been podcasting about it for years, but even I'm guilty. It's like, I'm not getting enough stress relief. And also where's that energy level at? Like I caught myself yawning today. I don't yawn. I, I used to a lot more. I don't know about you, but I was like, why am I yawning? Okay. There's, there's something off. So it's all about getting it dialed back in. And, and how do you help people understand that? Is that, I think people don't pay attention to those little, little things that I'm at least catching myself on, right? The yawning, where's the strength training at? Are your stress levels cranking up? I think a lot of us get caught off guard when all of a sudden it hits all at once because maybe they have been missing out on the exercise component. Yeah, I, I think some people, are, well, I know a lot of people overthink it. And then because they overthink it, they end up, re, you know, what does they say? Paralysis by analysis. So, oh, I've got to do this, got to do that. I haven't got time for this. And then they end up, oh, sorry, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to, you know, I'll start next month. I'll start next month. And, and I think that's, it, it, it is, it is very simple. And, and, and the thing that I think people want to do before anything, and, and I'm, I've been doing it for, you know, I was a junior bodybuilder at sort of 16, 17 years old, and I've been, I'm 52 now. So I've been wow. doing it for all of my life pretty consistently. So I'm, I'm, 
I'm a little bit of an anomaly, um, but I, I think for the average person uh, that that hasn't done that consistently for years and years and years, then then really the most important thing that you need to focus on is is creating a habit of 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 you know where you're going to fit some kind of activity or or, or movement into your life. I, I suppose I don't know many people. I'm, I'm not actually met any people that have not been able to create a habit of cleaning their teeth at least in the morning and when they get up and before they go to bed in the in an evening and and that okay it's just, it's this quick short habit but everybody's figured that out that that needs to be part of their life and and exercise is and, and, and whether it's it doesn't have to be going to the gym walk there's a huge amount of benefits just from brisk walking uh you can you can read that massive men, mental benefits and and it's, it's great for for your body the movement there's a, there's a ton of benefits just from doing something like that it's as simple as something like that so i think if if people can focus on being able to find the time within their busy schedules where you can do some form of activity whether it's going out on your bike going for a walk doing something in your house whatever you feel as though you could stick to from a consistent so it becomes a lifestyle habit you'll eventually find that 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 small that seed of a, of a habit, you, you start to experiment and try some other things. But unless you can really create the habit, um, just like we have good habits and bad habits, there's still habits, there's still patterns that we do, then, then getting involved in the latest program or product or thing online, is it, you're just really wasting your time because you never, you, you've never got the sort of mental um, strength and, and discipline to be able to stick to something long enough for you for it to make a difference in your life i i totally agree with you because uh, but i love how you did paralysis by analysis these are all great quotes by we're dropping in here but the other component of that which, which hits on what you were just talking about is and i i've tested this i feel that this quote is pretty accurate but they say it, it to build a true habit it takes at least 21 days is there's been books written about this right uh, so you need at least 21 days to build that set i actually and, heard there's a there's a nice podcast. There's a nice uh, bit of research from a uh, Andrew Huberman, uh, who okay. you probably know his podcast. But he he did some really. It's it's worth checking it out. But that that's a uh, that I, I've heard that and it's been around for a long time. But there's there's a lot of variables that they've actually figured out, and it can actually take several months to create oh, yes. a habit. It's, it's a short and a long one. But he he did a really nice piece, and I've, I'm going to spend a little bit of time trying to understand that because I was in your mindset. Well, you know, is it 30, 60 days, and then you're there and he was saying, well, it's not quite as uh, black and white as that. I agree with you because I spent years, you know, not officially, I never called myself a coach, but I've been such a health and fitness nut and people are like, oh, you have great genetics. And I'm like, no, no, no. Everybody in my family is is overweight, if not morbidly obese right now, because they don't do what I do. And we all grew up on the same farm as a kid. So it's like, I'm just still doing what I learned on the farm. Sorry, guys. But anyway, that aside... I agree with the 21 day thing for so some people to break through the met, the initial mental wall, 30 days to get true execution, right? That next week is now consistent execution after breaking through those mental barriers. But then back to your point, if we're talking about nutrition and stuff. Well, it, where, where are you at on the sugar addiction scale, right? You might need two, three months, uh, body transformation work that I worked with years ago. Uh, some people, yeah, they got a solid transformation within three months, but really to get it to stick was four months. You know, from the bodybuilding thing, again, are you are you doing a bodybuilding transformation? You know, what classification of bodybuilding? I, there's so many variables. So I, I just like to at least catch people to get them at least thinking, say, well, why don't you figure out where you're at? Try the first 21 days, then go 30. If you still haven't broken through, then you still got to figure out what that math is. You will eventually get there. It's just building that habit and the habitual nature that we all need. And this applies whether we're talking about exercise, fitness, nutrition, where we talk about, or the obviously the entrepreneurial game. I had to take all this stuff and I wasn't always an entrepreneur. I had to figure this out. And it's like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Uh, podcasting just doesn't just happen automatically. Like my first, if I went back and listened to my very first five episodes, dear God, uh, I did yeah. have this same nice, I did spend a lot of money on this microphone five years ago. Nice. But now I didn't have the soundboard, the three monitors, the ring lights. Like, this is my new house. So I, these are all uh, acoustic panels made in uh, in the Ukraine. <laughs> like, these are all like decorative wood. It's all like special custom foam behind. This is all, this is five years later, man. Like there's a lot of stuff that has happened over the years. I now, I, I was speaking at podcast conferences. So things change, right? We had to put a lot of reps in 
to get here. And I'd love to drop some of the, the, the jargon out there for you because like escape, escape fitness. How long have you guys been around now? 22 years now. Yeah. Oh, is that it's all? Quite a while. Oh, okay. <laughs> so wait a minute, the $33 million global business, that didn't just happen overnight? <laughs> Not quite, not quite as, uh, as, as quick as that, yeah. Yeah, so time. what was it like, I mean, 20 some years later, because I have to hit on this now, and then back, if you can remember that far back, it's like, did you have massive mental shifts? If you can try and sum up all that time. Uh, what was it, can you remember that far back and connect it to where you are today? Are you still repeating some of those best practices maybe that you learned along the way? Uh, I, I have mental shifts uh, all the time I, I think if i'm not I, i'm i'm probably not working hard enough on myself um so yeah it, even with the last couple of years you know every as, whenever you get to different stages in your business like most people a lot of people i know kind of build it sell out go and do the next one so we've been we've been through recessions and pandemics and uh, i think i think two or three recessions and um those in itself really kind of <laughs> cause you to grow and think differently and we, we went from a company in, in Great Britain we expanded we opened a business in Poland with hired people in Poland set up a company we did the same in Germany set up a company hired people we did it in Thailand we did it in China and wow. then we, we did it in United States so we've we've sort of done a lot of things and set up manufacturing and uh, distribution networks and we've developed products and there's all kind of things that you do and even today even even up right up until sort of this year we're 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 going into totally new areas and, and new opportunities and i suppose it's it's like that i don't know the exact story but i you can kind of get it it's like climbing a mountain and and you know when you're on the when you're at base camp although that's quite high just just getting to base camp in everest as an example you're you've got a, an amazing view on things just the, you know you're you're in a very different place than you was at the at the bottom and it's a it's a journey just to get to base camp but as you get up your your view and, and, and the things that you can see and the and the, the the environment around you is is totally different so the more the further you get up that mountain the the, the more things change as, as you sort of try and climb and get get to your goals so I think that's the problem that most people do and I I you know me and my wife are, are sort of you know always like to challenge that which is why I have company in our podcast is about escaping your own personal limits and mm, we constantly nice. challenge ourselves in other ways to to sort of break the break the rules that you be, you believe were always true um, I, I interviewed a guy yesterday he's got a company very interesting company called lasso they they develop this this stock uh, that they that it's almost like a a brace you know like if you if you have ankle injuries you strap it up with with um uh, supports or yeah, like a uh, ACE bandage is a popular brand with the, it's an elastic. My wife just had a full tear of her ACL. I just went okay. through her first surgery of her life. Uh, she's an equine horse veterinarian doctor and the horse injured her. Uh, but after yeah. all these years she got injured and yeah. So now granted she's not bracing the ankle, but again, same type of, they're using a lot of that bracing tech to stabilize during this promote healing. Exactly. So, yeah. And yeah. then it also like rock tape that works in a similar yep. way where it supports you. So he's created these socks that, that, does a similar thing and he was telling me about his business and almost like everything you know very very super intelligent guy uh forbes under uh, what is it called under 30 on the under 30 list and um but but a very everything about marketing about um businesses goals budgeting um focusing on money as opposed to customers like everything that you hear and listen in a in a textbook about business he's like no we don't do that. We don't do that. And, and, and he's got a very successful business and it kind of really, cha it really challenged me to sort of say, well, look, a lot of times the things that you just think are right and you're trying to perfect and you're trying to get to that point, you know, sometimes it's like, no, actually let's, maybe there's a different way. Maybe that isn't right. And, or, or, and maybe we can do things better. And, and so I, I think it's, um, as we get older, we, we get stuck in, in patterns that we learn from our parents and people around us and and i suppose when you're a kid you don't have any of that you, you have total freedom and flexibility to do what you want and i think the, the, the key thing that we should try and do as as adults as we get older is not believe that this happens when you get older so that's challenging your body 
challenge in your mind, which is probably more important than your body, because anything you challenge in your mind is going to affect what you do for your body and what you believe is possible. And, you know, we, we should all really, um, that's my perspective, just constantly challenge those things and think, is that really how it should be? Or is that just some construct that we've, we've believed in that's been created by people and um, like money, he said money, like you know, money's a man-made construct. Yeah. And money, so doesn't, money, money doesn't exist once you figure it out. People are like, what? It's like, it's, yeah, it's just a form of exchange. I mean, it's not actually real. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and yet everything, you know, for whatever reason, everybody is, is obsessed. Relationships break down for it. Uh, you know, everything is, is really driven about people's desire for money and what they think money is going to give them. And as he said, look, you know, you, the, the sooner, which is what he said he spent a lot of years working on, the sooner you can free yourself from an attachment to money, you're no longer a slave to it. And, and you can then live your life in, in your own way based on a different set of rules. And, and it was quite, you know, it's quite liberating. You know, imagine if money was not a problem. Now, there's two ways of doing it. I'd be so rich that money isn't a problem or, or be able to sort of make it not that, that it's not a problem. Focus on the things that you're passionate about and you enjoy. And as he said, the money and the trappings and the, and, and the things that go around you doing what you're passionate about as a result will get you what you're trying to do by focusing on money. And it was, I've gone a bit off track, but it, yeah, it's definitely something to think about. That's for oh, sure. it's not off track because let's tie that back into the mental game and the physical game too. Like for example, four years, I didn't have my own gym. I always went and trained everywhere, but then I flipped my mental switch and just, I have, you know, author now, podcasting, marketing company, like there's a lot of other things going on. I'm like, well, when I finish a meeting, if I got about an hour break, I could just pop right out to my own gym now. And my wife's like, well, why don't you just go join the, you know, our buddies, you know, Rob, uh, you know, and I'm like, I, yeah, I like to be able to drop in whenever I want. If I want to just drop in, like, I can, I'll just drop in, but it takes two minutes to walk outside into the barn and I can train. So adding in the commute, the car and everything else. That's just me. It's nothing against it. I still love going. I said, I love going and immersing myself in the culture and the community of what those types of gyms have. Uh, even like I stayed in a hotel the past couple of nights, I was using the hotel gym, right? I wish they had better equipment like you guys have, uh, but it is a hotel gym. <laughs> you got you to gotta, you gotta work with what you got. You know, you got to break, like you were saying, break the constructs, like dare to do something different in your life that could possibly literally generate a whole new outcome and a more positive outcome back to the money thing as well. It's like my goal this year is to spend more cash on travel. And people are like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, I always just like use, I set up my own company credit card and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, I don't, I'm not, I realized I wasn't getting a lot out of the whole point system and everything else. It's like, well, I'd rather just, okay, the money's in the account, just pay it with the visa check card. And people are like, well, it's still a card. I'm like, no, that's real time money. The money's there. Mm -hmm. I can spend it. Why put it on a card? There's no point to the point where like my, my card hasn't been used in a while. I just did a big investment thing and I paid it off real time, no debt, no interest. So they went and raised my card on a $20,000 limit. I'm like, it's still zero. I don't, you could raise your limit all you want. I don't need it. As I'll, I'll give you a, an interesting thing. I, 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 I love travel. I travel a lot. I get back yeah. to, well, I used to go back to Europe a lot. And, and one of the things I do, I, if you like travel, I, I have a, a, um, I've got an Amex and a, um, what is it called? A, a Bonvoy visa. And so you, you kind of build up these points. So anything I can put on my card, like I, I pay it off each month, but anything yeah. I can put on my card, like as ridiculously expensive as it is, I do it. Cause you kind of get all these points and then as you long know, as you can pay it off every month. Year, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to, yeah. That, don't, don't use the credit, but it, it, if as two or three times a year, you know, you kind of get sweet upgrades and yeah. like, you know, you get a lot of really, the MX, really nice the MX game. Going. If you can own the MX game, <laughs> you are correct. Uh, my, my, my one client swears by the MX game. Like most of her vacations are just like, it's just the Amex game, man. She, yeah. she, she has figured it out, but she's religious. Yeah. She will never carry that balance. It's always paid off. So, oh no, never, never always paid off straight away. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Totally. But it's like, so anyway. when you buy your, when you buy your gym gear, for example, here you go. So, yeah. as you know, last, last <laughs> year, well, 2020 really into 2021, like now, now here in 22, we're dealing with all kinds of supply chain impacts, which you could probably talk a lot about. Uh, but, one of, one of my biggest clients uh, I was just talking about, she's heavily niched in the HVAC sector. So everybody takes their indoor air quality for granted. Well, she works with nine different manufacturing companies and is basically the sales representation firm for the entire Northeast USA for those companies. So everything from Delaware to Maine, she's responsible for, for nine different manufacturers. 
So she could sell the crap out of it and I can help her sell the crap out of this stuff with our, our relationship and our contracts. But all of a sudden the factories now can't ship stuff or, well, they're waiting to ship it because they're waiting on this part or this component. So it's so like back early, early pandemic, right? Rogue Fitness did a great job capturing a big section of the market. And I'm sure they're one of your competitors, right? So, but people said, oh, it's made in the USA company. I'm like, no, it's not. I was like, I've had bumper plates show up and it says made in China. So yes, they're branded as a made in USA company. But then all of a sudden I have to go on their website because I needed some more bumper plates for my Olympic lifting platform. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll get, I'll get an email notification when they become available. <laughs> so, <laughs> so all last year, I just had stuff magically showing up. My wife like started freaking out. She's like, what did you buy now? I'm like, well, to be fair, I already bought it. It was just a while ago. <laughs> but the, the, the market's been crazy. But I, I remind people, I'm like, yes, even Rogue Fitness, where all their marketing is really centered on that whole made in the USA thing. Okay, maybe the barbells here or some of the metal stuff here. But trust me, those bumper plates showed up and it said clearly marked in the cardboard made in China. It is not a 100% made in the USA company. And if you're okay with that, just understand that. I just don't, as a marketing guy, I'm always wanting to coach clients and companies like just be true and transparent. Don't, don't play in the, in that foggy water right there. Just make sure people know like, okay, fine. If all your steel is made in the USA, but the rubberized coated bumper plates, those are coming out of China. Then just say that it's already on the cardboard. I'm going to find out when it shows up off the chipping truck. <laughs> I mean, what do you talk about with stuff like that? Cause a lot of people don't understand where a lot of this stuff is made. Yeah. Like I obviously know that business very well. So, uh, you know, I suppose it, it's an obvious thing. No, nobody's, nobody's actually making bumpers um, in America. No. Um, I know there's a, I know, I know you can get some sort of um, like a recycled product, but like the, the traditional. Oh, that, that ground up that pressed seeing. into a plate thing. I hate those things. Yeah. You've got people doing that. And we're actually working on one that we're making in England out of, uh, we, we've got a patent on a recycled material and we we've got a plant-based urethane that we're working on so to, uh, actually to, I, to, you, to, you give me an excuse to screen share now because i was just looking at your urethane bumper plates is that what those are no those, those ones are made in asia the, the the product that we've been developing is really just a um you know any anything that's coming from china at the moment is just extremely difficult to get hold of and yes. unfortunately everything everything is made in china because it's very difficult to get it made in a lot of cases over here at the prices people are prepared to pay for it but we sure. we are developing um currently we we're, we've got prototypes of dumbbells and weight plates that we make in england and it's a it's a it's, it's got about 80 percent recycled products in oh nice and it's pretty competitive with the um with with what's made in asia so as, as a company with like rogue you know i, I I get what you're saying. I, I think they do a great job um, compared to most businesses. They, well, again, the, the CrossFit sector really helped them blow up. Yeah. I mean, when the CrossFit Games and they were sponsoring it, it was a perfect marketing relationship for them because prior to me getting into that world of fitness, I didn't even know who they were. I mean, I was a classic, people call them Globo gyms, but I was just using whatever I saw at all the different gyms I taught spinning at and stuff. I just and whatever gyms I would, if I moved, I would join the local, I used to live in Arizona when I was firefighting out there. I joined the 24 seven fitness. I think it was called it's a chain out there. I think 24 like, hour. Yeah. 24 hour. Yeah. So I joined them. Yeah. I'm like, okay, there's a higher end gym out in Scottsdale. I forget the name of that one, but they've got Econo some fans. A lifetime. Not a uh, lifetime. Thank you. Lifetime. Yeah. Again, you're a Cali guy. So I figured, you know, these actually I'll be back there at the end of the month. Um, uh, first week mm -hmm. of, uh, February, I'll be out there. So, uh, I'm looking to catch up with old friends while I'm out there on business. So yeah, it's interesting how there's so many different big brands out there. So, uh, but so how I'm excited, plant-based, interesting hybrid technology. And then you're going to be able to make that in the UK. Yeah. We, we're going to start production cool. in the UK in a few months. And again, you, you probably saw with the, the challenges with rogue is that this stuff takes a long time. You, you, you can't get it. And it's not just that it's raw material, issues in in asia there's there's uh labor issues in 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 china there's government blackouts where they cut the power off because they, they particularly around the olympics they were trying to clean up the environment so yep. they would only allow you to work the factories to operate three days so um and then it was amazing got, how amazing the atmosphere cleaned up and because I, I loved watching that olympics i'm like a buddy of mike goes over there on business all the time and he was sending me photos he's like it doesn't normally look like that <laughs> 
So it's amazing how fast they're able to clean up the air just by shutting down factories, like you're saying. So yeah, yeah. and then you've got you know you you have to find a vessel to get your containers on, and this is for everybody. Then when you get a vessel, it sits outside. Where I'm based in Long Beach, trying to get through and offloaded. Then it waits because there's a shortage of truckers, and yep. so it's 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 gone for us from about six weeks to about nine well it's, it's probably six to nine weeks to about six to nine months now to get stuff so yeah. if you want some fitness equipment i would say the prices are still likely to continue to go up and it's probably going to be difficult in the middle of a year to get it so if you uh if you do want to buy it then now's not a bad time to, to so when people shop on your out. site because i'm intrigued now when people shop on your site with rogue i don't see i wasn't allowed to buy it i had to they would send me i i could log my email into the wait list, and then I would get an email. But if I didn't jump on that email alert, by the time I got onto the site that night, if I waited a few hours, other people must have gotten the same alert, and then boom, it was all sold out again. I was like, come on. Yeah. Um, I was like, can I just lock in my price now? I'm committed. I want to buy it. And then you'll let me know when it's available. I'm okay with that. I'm not everybody's okay with that. But how do you guys get around that? So do you let yeah, people go and buy? Price, it depends on how far out it's going to be we're, we're pretty um we've, we've got a pretty decent process and we're predominantly business to business so we work yes. with as, as you mentioned earlier a lot of a lot of gyms trainers we, we we have a small part which is which is direct to consumer but predominantly it's going into clubs and most of that is it gives us the ability to plan out a little bit further than people who kind of want to just purchase things immediately yeah. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Part of your background is you guys are very heavily niche in like studio environments too. You're not just helping the big chain gyms. You're doing a lot with those boutique, uh, which I've actually always been excited by. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're following the CrossFit brand or not. But I always teach people like CrossFit's a brand. It's 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 a form of well marketed, uh, functional fitness. Uh, for example, a lot of my friends after some. Uh, we'll just say negative press over the past two years of what was going on in the CrossFit world. They separated, they stopped paying for the licensure of the name. And they've like my buddy's facility that my wife goes to, he, after five years, rebranded himself. And he's now called just F13 performance. He removed CrossFit, doesn't pay them the licensing rights anymore. He's like, I don't need it. He's, like, he's got one of the most successful facilities here in the greater Lehigh Valley. Uh, and charges more than everybody else to go there. And he's got a huge client base. So, He's doing just fine. <laughs> so it's interesting. Yeah. Um, but I love the boutique uh, facilities as well, because you got these people who are, have amazing backgrounds, uh, amazing knowledge and training, and they're maybe they have a, probably have great magnetic personalities and they could build a very sustainable business and not have these giant square footage facilities too. Like, do you have an idea like percentage wise, like how many are you, like large facilities versus like small boutique style uh, you guys work with? I, I did know that um, I used to sort of track that that data. I, I think, as you say, it's that the the cost to get into a small studio is pretty low. Can, like if you a big box or the Globo gyms, as you call them, yeah. can be a few million and up to to get something like that. So obviously, there's not not everybody can do one of those. But the smaller studios, um, you know, you can be a hundred, hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand, and you're you're ready to go and you can get a pretty cool facility like that. So the barrier to entry is a lot lower. The, the service in a lot of cases is owned by a trainer and, and they know they've got some clients and they generally do a good job at service and the quality of the program is good. So I can see why that's, why that's, there's a big appeal to that. I do like both. I think there's for me, uh, as someone who spends, who spent a lot of time in gyms, I, I like some of what, not all of them, but certain big box brands offer because you can kind of, do a lot in there there's mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of variety and 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 they're pretty affordable now and there's there's certain ones i still i still go to but it's also nice to go into these small studios hit training we, we we work with those and they they're just a single idea but you you get a very different dynamic and energy and experience from those so i think they're all they, they all have their their place and and i think the the market itself has become which it should have done quite is starting to diversify so you've got so many different areas to go into I, I was talking to i interviewed another guy last week who's got a brand called next health and 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 so that's kind of on the verge of medical and fitness where you can Ooh. you can have all your drips and your your energy oh, like the iv stuff injections and yeah. and your, yeah. your your cryo and and your, your saunas so I, th I think that 
that people are realizing that fitness is not just going running on a treadmill and and using some fixed machines I, I think people realize that that is is very different you you need to kind of have a real a, a sort of broad portfolio of things that you do at different times to complement it and then then there's also the the whole recovery and rejuvenation and longevity element which is which is also part of that so it's so it's quite exciting an exciting space to to be involved with and and there's some really exciting things to to learn about to improve like like you said at the beginning to improve your own personal performance so you can live that high performance life which is what what's better than what's what's better than being, being able to do that really oh again i never thought i'd ever get into like unofficially designing my own space. I mean, to be fair, actually, I love the fact you actually, I noticed that on your site too, you guys actually do do design services, which is super cool because you could be the best trainer in the world and maybe you like it a certain way. But to your point, if I'm just an NMA focused facility and then somebody else like this, this guy Next Health is now looking to add in a lot of the wellness components, maybe creating a space for massage therapy, having an IV treatment room, you know, that's a whole different design. Right now you've got multiple rooms, you need some privacy versus a wide open area. And again, if you're MMA, are you doing a lot of body weight training too, or do you need a strength training section? So is that another corner? So there's a lot of variables. Me, I'm just like, I go to tractor supply, I buy uh, 12, you know, horse stall mats that are four by six inch, three quarter inch, you know, put them all together, a nice big square, and then start building up my rig and everything else. So I'm, a, I'm not your normal facility. It's also for me in my barn. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. Whereas my buddy's facility, he's got over 10,000 square feet. That's a lot of space to play with. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, so, that's right. yeah, it's super cool to see companies like you guys doing all these different variations. Um, that's why I love poking through your site earlier as well. So what would you say, because we got about like 10 minutes left. What, what would you say after all these years of you doing what you do? Because I guarantee you, I have listeners in this space that have been back and forth whether or not to start their own facility, or they know people who have started their own, whether it's CrossFit or not, right? It could be MMA facility, whatever. Are there best practices that you like to talk about on your podcast that you could share? Maybe like, hey, I've been doing this for a while. Here's what I've seen. Yes, this is a unique market, but you said you've been through multiple recessions and everything else. So guys, we probably have seen it all. So here's some things that I've seen that if you can adopt these practices and thought processes, you have a chance of survival, I guess, because you can, we also have to admit, we've seen a lot of fitness facilities come and go. And, and I feel terrible when I see people have to close their doors, but that's also a sign. And I said this in early pandemic, this is a sign. Were you ready? Did, were you ready to innovate and improvise? Because I worked with a number of friends and helped them get them online, get them virtual. Whereas I had other friends, they already had an online demographic. My one buddy's facility, even though he's got a CrossFit facility, he had a private online clients that are in different time zones who had moved away, but they still wanted to train under him. So he developed a whole online education segment through YouTube. So he was already ready. People were not. Mm -hmm. Is there some yeah. variables that you've seen that help people transcend these things? Well, yeah, we, we've interviewed a lot of people in that space from people who've got big boutique chains and big boxes and everything in between in different countries. And, and so there's a lot of, I suppose there's a lot of operational stuff that you talk about and industry dynamics, but I, I think for anyone that's just really starting out, I, I would say that maybe the mistake that people make, uh, particularly maybe small business owners that, that set up studios as an example when 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 you if you if you got an idea and you want to do a big space then you you go out and you borrow money and then you've got a team of people that are sort of keeping you quite focused but if you're doing it on your own and you're raising a small amount of money that i think that's that that's the group where things tend to fail quite quickly well you can fail when you're big but you, you fail a lot a lot of the smaller ones tend to fail a lot quickly. And I, I think the reason is, is because they don't really spend that time at the beginning getting really clear about why they're doing it. Is it just that they love fitness? And mm -hmm. if that's, if it's just that they love fitness and it seems like a natural transition, then that's, you probably need to go a little bit deeper and understand that you're not going to be doing a lot of fitness. You're actually running a business and it just happens to be a fitness business um, just like any other business. And, but you're still running a business. So I think you've got to figure that part out. Why, why are you doing it? And then what, what's your 
fundamental business skill. Are you a visionary? Are you, are you an operator? Are you a finance person? Are you a marketeer? And, and so you gotta, you gotta figure out your space. You, in the beginning, you have to be a little bit of both, but you certainly are gonna gravitate to one of those. And, and then what you need to do is then just think about, well, how are you gonna build that team of people around you to complement those skills? Uh, you, you've really got, got to sort of figure that out, which is really important. Most people don't think about that until it's too late. And then what, what is your, how are you differentiating yourself? Because there's, there's everything out there. You've got every type of hot yoga, cold yoga, um, ice yoga. I'm go sure go yoga. Boxing and, yeah, Don't you, forget you, about the got, go yoga. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> you got yoga combined with spinning and, and so did you name it. Yeah. I'm sure it sort of exists somewhere there. So you got to, you got to think of what, how you're going to, really differentiate yourself and there's there's a lot of ways that you can do that obviously but a lot of people react to the simple things of well i'm i used to be a boxer and <clears throat> i'm I, I like boxing and i I've, i know some friends and etc and i'm going to open a boxing gym and and i think there are those stories those unique stories where sometimes the stars are aligned and then things kind of happen and and you look at them and think well yeah they didn't do anything special but when you start interviewing people like you do and I do, and you spend a couple of hours with them and you drill down, you normally find that actually what, what from the surface, what you felt was, was what made them successful. And even they probably don't know in, in certain cases, there's some real clever things that they're either doing consciously or unconsciously that are not apparent that, that's, that's got them to where they need to be. So, so I would say first thing in anything is that what, where, where are you going and why? You've got you to really get clear about that. You got to make sure that you've got that that team around you, those right skills, and you don't want two people that do exactly. You don't want two marketeers or two visionaries or mm -hmm. two finance people. You want to make sure that you're building people, partners that have got nice complementary skills that are business fundamentals. And then you've got to really understand about what's the product, and 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 that you've got to get really clear about that. And you you want to, if you can, find some ways of testing it. Gyms are great because for for if, if you've got a, an idea about some sort of fitness concept or, or, or anything like that, you can, you can do it on a very, very small level with a few people in a park or whatever. There's, there's ways that you can test concepts out. Um, not all of them, certain things you've got to, you actually got to make an investment, but there's a lot of things that you could kind of find a way of testing out and, and seeing if people are prepared to pay the money that you need in order to make it successful. And that's the other, I suppose the final thing that I didn't say is, is, is your, is your pricing, are you, are you gonna sort of get this whole thing going and then you've got it built and then you're two years in and you think, shit, I, I can't make any money out of this. Well, you should have figured oh, yeah, that yeah, out. You're not even paying you yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta, you gotta make sure that the, the financials work and that by the time you're in it, you're not gonna wanna go in there every day, you're gonna wanna take a vacation and, and, and do mm -hmm. other things. And, and so you, you gotta make sure that that model actually makes you money, which is, I guess a key reason that you you know even even if you even if it's not all about money you're going to need to generate cash to be able to fund the the survival of that type of business. The passion can only take us so far, right? I love what you've actually you, you've hit us some big things like it's hilarious because I had books popping up in my head. I'm making mental notes as you're running through all these things. Which first off, one of my favorite entrepreneurial books, E Myth Revisited. That's what I thought of as soon as you start talking about all the hats you wear, because yes, if you're a solo solopreneur, a solo entrepreneur starting things out, you are going to have to wear all the hats unless your wife happens to be a CFO slash accountant slash bookkeeper. Great. Maybe she can step in and help you with that and lead the financial side of the company while you figure out the operational executions. And then yes, to your point, well, okay, maybe we're going to grow enough client base. I'm going to have to bring on other trainers. So who's going to be the head trainer or the head coach, right? You can't have four head coaches, you know, things like that. Um, uh, it's funny because it's not funny. It's sad, but I've seen a lot of CrossFit facilities come and go because I travel a lot and I go back to a city and they're either not there. They change owners. You know, the old owner sold out and now he's just a member and a new one stepped in because maybe they had more money in their savings account. Uh, what a, it's hilarious. I've seen it all. And But back to your point about niching yourselves. I remind people all the time, like CrossFit, I, I can't help it. I'm in that community. But the beauty of the model is that Usually there's one in every town, 
so to speak. In my area, I can within 30 minutes drive, I can reach 10 different facilities, but they're all niched in their own little mini city or town community. But even some of the best ones have really tried to focus on like my one buddy, he has the biggest facility here. He's very high end. He's like, listen, he offers the, you could do the traditional group classes or he goes like very high end one-on-one training and that's it. There's another one about 20 minutes away. They've done a great job really honing their brand. They're all about family. They love having the group family classes, the kids, they got a whole, they have a, a hits whole kids program. Whereas no other facilities like, yeah, bring your kids on the weekends, stuff like that. But I didn't really see a true family niche. That's one of the cores of that one facility. So they've spent the time to realize the owners are family people. They've got kids. They love seeing their friends, families get healthy and fit. They went with the family niche model. Not every gym does that. That's very unique. So back to your point, right? Knowing how to pass the hats off, putting the right people in place, uh, replacing yourself, reminding yourself that you got to pay yourself. That made me think of, um, I've had him on the show too, but on his show, Michael McCallowitz, best-selling author of Profit First for Entrepreneurs. Uh, and, um, and he's got like five other books, but that guy is all about teaching entrepreneurs how to make profit first. Like how do you pay yourself along the journey? You don't wait until maybe five years from now, you finally get to have some profit for yourself. Like you got to pay yourself along the journey or else you're not enjoying the process. So uh, these are great tips you shared. Thank you. So uh, well, I've had a lot of fun today. It's been fun digging into the back end of the gym world and and seeing the level of influence you have. And I'm I, I'm proud to have you on. I love seeing people like you who take it that seriously. And you actually have not just the equipment, but you have a show that you're trying to help people understand more about this profession and and how to, I would like to think, build more sustainable businesses that are out there to help people get more healthy and fit. I mean, granted, some gyms have even started figuring out the kitchen for people, which is a big component. But in the end, you still got, we said like earlier in the show, you got to exercise. You got to find a way to relieve the stress, keep the energy up. And a lot of people love going into very nice facilities with very nice equipment like you have. So I didn't get a chance to dig into the tire thing, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we bring the show to a close, he's got a cool, I flipped a lot of tires in my day. <laughs> I've hit him with the sledgehammers. I, again, I grew up on a farm. What do you guys call that thing? It's I have to it's say called the, we... it's called the tire T I Y R T I Y R. It's a, yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's we go up to about 220 pounds. It's it's just uh, a, we we a lot of the gyms we put in are not CrossFit gyms. They kind of they're nice and they got carpets in and people wear nice outfits and that sort of stuff. So you can you can flip it. My mum can do farmers carries on it, drop it on her toes. It's not going to break a, a feet or anything like that. So you can yeah. flip it, you can drag it, you can push it like a sled. It's a uh, it's a really cool functional tool. And you'll see in like we sell a lot of those. So you'll see it um, yeah. in many, many gyms. And um, it's one of our one of our most popular products, actually. Well, that was the one so, thing and I'm screen sharing now for the video watchers, because then traditional podcasting world, this uh, would already have streamed live on the Facebook channel for Live the Fuel. And then this will also be on the YouTube channel once it goes live in the podcast world. But it is probably the nicest thing that I've seen to flip and throw around and you guys got handles on it, which is one of the biggest things that misses the the tire world is that and no offense to the ladies, but my wife, my wife's hands are smaller than mine. And unless you got one of those rubber tires that happen to have the big chunky tread on it that wasn't worn off, you might have something to grab onto, but not everybody can just scoop up and get under it. So helping yeah. people meet people where they're at in their strength scale, having those strapped handles on there, I think is a huge win on a design standpoint. I, I love that. Mm -hmm. So I had to Thank give you a shout out before the end of the show. I was like, that is cool. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, well, listen, we're at the end of the slot. Thanks for giving me the time today. Um, I do give my guest co-hosts a chance to close the show out. So you've already shared a lot of great tips at the end, but is there an all-encompassing message you want to leave behind uh, for your listeners and watchers out there? Yeah, I'll just remind, I'll just, just remind them what I said at the beginning. It, it's, it's uh, I, I suppose you, you think that there'll be a time where you'll figure out how to make health and fitness important in your life. And I, I've interviewed, probably like you, I've, I've interviewed a two or 300 very successful people in all areas, all, not just fitness, but in many different areas of business. And, and I think consistently, the one thing that, that really separates those from anyone else is just having, having finding where that fits into your life and, and but, but putting it before everything else. It's in, in your hierarchy of things to do is, is stick fitness at the top. And I think if you can make that a habit, then you'll find that, dealing with all the other stuff that life throws at you on a regular basis, including preventing yourself from getting totally destroyed from whatever German pandemic and everything is out there. You, you'll, you won't 
go far wrong. <laughs> well said. Well said. Uh, well, listen, if you, if you got a minute, hang tight. I'll give you a proper goodbye off the air. So, again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was Matthew. I mean, he rocked the mic for you all today. He's got – we're going to have all the links in the show notes for you. You can find the website. He's got a very viral of Instagram and YouTube following. And, again, the podcast uh, – don't count out. I love passing people on to other people's shows. I'm not trying to hold everybody up there. I also have actually, we're about to flip 400 shows online. I'm, trying, actually, I'm not sure wow. where you, you, I'm not sure if you'll be 400 or not. You're, you're really close. Uh, so, uh, but again, your podcast is escape your limits, correct? Well, escape your limits. Yeah. We okay. go out every week. We're on YouTube and SoundCloud, Spotify, ex, yep. you know, iTunes. That's, that's the goal. You got to get it everywhere. Get it everywhere. So <laughs> once you jump through the Spotify hoop and, and you got to move on to the next hoop. So, well, listen, hang tight. Give part of a goodbye again. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for tuning in. Remember, you too can live the fuel. And we'll talk to you guys again soon. Thank you for subscribing to Live the Fuel. Stay connected on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Live the Fuel. And remember, you too can live the fuel. So please visit us at livethefuel.com.